It's the fact that you have no resort fees on any of your hotel stays. If you are someone that goes to Vegas, this can be an easy way to get Caesars Diamond status. The Wyndham Rewards Earner Business is one of the best cards out there that is slept on that people don't talk about. In today's video, we'll look at everything you need to know about the card. We'll start with the basics, talk about its superpower and why I think it's an S tier card, and then finish off of how it fits into the Vegas landscape. Big favorite before we dive in is to give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm, and it does surprisingly help, especially for these videos that don't feature big names like Chase. If you are new to the Ask Sebi Business channel, then consider subscribing and maybe share it with a friend. Okay, starting with the basics, let's look at the multipliers. You're going to get 8x Wyndham points back for your Wyndham stays and also at gas stations. You get 5x for marketing, advertising, and also utilities. You get 1x for everything else with the exception of Wyndham Timeshare Resort down payments. Wyndham uses an award chart, meaning that for each hotel, they charge a fixed rate. So for example, their cheap hotels might be 7,500 points, and then their expensive hotels might be 30,000 points. The target here is 1.1 cents per point, meaning that if you have 100,000 points, you're looking to get $1,100 in value. In effect, this also means that 8x is 8.8% and 5x is 5.5%, which makes the rewards earner business a pretty good rewards earner, especially if you factor in that categories like gas tend to be a bit more difficult and things like advertising seem to be pretty gigantic categories for certain businesses. Let's run through two use cases and then get back to the card. First example is going to be the Acti Imperial in Greece. This is a five-star hotel and pretty good reviews. People tend to summer in Greece because that's the best time and rates can easily be between 300 and 450. If you want to use points here, it's going to cost you 30,000 Wyndham. On the low end at $300 divided by 30,000 points, that's one cent per point. On the higher end at 450 divided by 30K points, that's 1.5 cents per point. Similar to most other hotels, it depends on when you want to go and how busy it is. Another example is the Wyndham Grand Clearwater Beach, which is a four-star hotel in Tampa. Pretty good reviews as well, and retail rate is going to run you about 400 during the peak season. 400 divided by 30,000 points is 1.3 cents per point. And reminder that Wyndhams tend to be more homey rather than luxury, so it might not fit your taste. For example, Hilton has Conrad, Waldorf Astoria, as well as LXR. Marriott Bonvoy has Ritz-Carlton, St. Regis, and the Luxury Collection. Even Hyatt arguably has Park Hyatt and Daz, as well as the Muraville Partnership. If you are someone that's more of an aspirational traveler, then I'd treat these points as a backup or emergency option more than a first option. For example, if you're in Tampa or New York or a lot of other places for a conference and everything else is obscenely priced, then this might be a good backup. Okay, back to the card. There is a $95 annual fee, but you also get an annual bonus. You get 15,000 bonus points for each card member anniversary, so each year of you having the card, and that's going to be up to two nights at the cheapest properties. By our math at 1.1 cents per point, 15k points is 165 in value. 165 in points, maybe even 150 or some lower number for a $95 annual fee is pretty good. By that metric alone, it's a keeper card given that you're paying X and getting X plus Y value. Put another way for a lot of people, you're getting paid to keep the card if you care about travel. There also is a list of other benefits. Firstly, employee cards are free, which is helpful given the nature of the card. There's no foreign transaction fees and you also get card member booking discounts for eligible rates. If you're looking to use your points, you can actually redeem less points for some of the reward stays. One perk we're seeing on a lot of recent cards is cell phone protection. Feel free to pause this section because there are a lot of tidbits and I'm not going to read through everything. So there are a ton of rules in terms of how you get the benefits. They do cover replacements and repairs depending on if it's damaged or stolen. It's up to $600 per claim or $1,000 per 12 month period with a $50 deductible. If you have a top of the line iPhone, then maybe that doesn't feel that substantial, but if you do have more economic phones, then it can be pretty useful. There also are a ton of things that are not covered, so check the terms. For example, if it's stolen from a construction site or if it's lost or mysteriously disappears, tons of rules here. The most important benefit here is automatic Wyndham Diamond status and we'll get into that in part two. In fact, I would argue that that's the card's superpower. Before that, if you do want to learn about cards, whether this one or pretty much any other card out there, and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com business, and also down below in the description box. Make sure that the offers are competitive, that the cards make sense for you, but otherwise it is a huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. Okay, so you get Wyndham Diamond status. What does that get you? And why is that S tier? As a baseline, you get suite upgrades, welcome amenity at check-in, and more at Wyndham Properties. By itself, that's already pretty good because if you compare it to other benefits you would get from even pretty good hotel cards at $95, it doesn't compare. For example, I love the world of Hyatt, but it's not going to get you suite upgrades. 
There are cards in the 450 to 650 range that do that, but even then, only the Hilton gives it a top level status. So taking a look at the Wyndham chart, Diamond is the top status in the far right, and you would normally need to spend 40 nights per year in order to get and keep the status. Taking a look at the perks, you get late checkout, early check-in, and Caesar status match. That's a pretty juicy one, and we'll get to that in a minute. You also get rental upgrades when you rent through Avis and budget. By itself, all pretty good. If you take a look at the perks that are just exclusive to Diamond, you get sweet upgrades, welcome amenity at check-in, and the ability to gift gold. And again, this is just from a $95 annual fee card, not $450, not $550, not $650, $95. Not a game, we're talking about practice. Okay, this sounds nice by all means, but I don't stay at Wyndham's. Why should I care? I guess it depends on how you play your cards. If you are someone that goes to Vegas, then this can be your ticket to Caesars Diamond status. If you have Wyndham Platinum or Diamond, you can match over to Caesars. Once you do that, you get a Caesars card, which allows you to skip lines and also get discounts. Wait, 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 wait. I thought that was discontinued. I heard about this whole status match merry-go-round thing, but I thought Caesars put an end to it. Yes and no. They did end it, but specifically for unearned status matches. In the past, people would get a card like the Chase IHG and to have a status over there for the program, match it over to Wyndham, and then use that temporary Wyndham status to match over to Caesars. Once you had these two, you could pretty much do this merry-go-round system and go back and forth. You'd have your Wyndham status that would expire on December 31st and then go back to nothing. But between January 1st and January 31st, you still had your Caesar status. So what you would do was match back over to this one in order to get diamond status. Caesar status was on a different clock and would expire on January 31st. So that means on the 31st, goes back to this. But on February 1st or any time afterwards, you could take this and match back over and now have good status for both programs. Hence the whole merry-go-round system and why people were not happy, probably the people at Caesars. As of filming in 2023, this whole system stopped working. There are still some people that are on the carousel that are still doing it, but I think eventually they'll get caught as well. Also, if you were not on that carousel before, there's no way to get on it now. In addition, Wyndham has stopped letting people match over from programs like Hilton or IHG in order to even start this process. This is the case as of filming and also, I guess, two years ago. There are some things that still work and will probably keep working moving forwards. So number one, you get Wyndham Diamond status by having the Wyndham earner business. Number two, Wyndham Diamond still matches over to Caesars Diamond if you have earned status, whether that's staying 40 nights or having the credit card. If you do want to confirm this, whether you're watching this right now or in the future and you want to see if it still works, you can head over to Flyer Talk and look for data points. You might have to wait two weeks for the status to kick in, but it should be fine. And in fact, this person got approved, got the upgraded diamond status on a new account, matched over to Caesars, all before even getting the credit card. One of the obvious questions is whether this whole process goes away in the same way as the carousel. I don't think so because it's not a temporary status. You do have the full on Wyndham Diamond as long as you hold the card. I can't imagine Caesars caring because this kind of affected and benefited everyone. This card one only benefits people who apply for the card. The TAM, the total addressable market for the carousel is substantially larger than people who are applying for this card. Okay, part three is Vegas benefits. If you are someone new to Vegas, then it might seem pretty daunting because it seems like there's a lot of options and they're all competing with each other. Ironically, that's not actually the case whatsoever. There's a channel called Neo that has an amazing video on this that you can watch after this one, but it's very much Caesars versus MGM. Taking a look at this old picture, you get a pretty good idea of the landscape. So even though Excalibur and Luxor look like different hotels, they're more so sister hotels rather than directly competing with each other. Some of the big ones in the middle are missing, so let's fill in the map. One of the staples of Vegas and one of my favorites is Bellagio, and Bellagio is part of MGM. Another one of my favorites that's right next door is Aria. Oh look, Aria is also part of MGM. What about across the street at Cosmopolitan? It's also part of MGM. On one side, you have MGM. Its main competitor is Caesars. The most famous and crown jewel in Vegas is Caesars Palace. Consider that Vegas movies like The Hangover do a pretty good job of helping out with marketing. There also are a lot of budget options, and I've stated a few of them. They're not bad. Back in the day, Flamingo was an old favorite that Mandy and I would go to. Rio is a bit far out, but also another good budget option. I haven't stayed at Paris, but I've walked through a lot of times, and it has its charm. Cromwell is one of the nice ones, and Link is a newer one that's by the Ferris wheel. If you are a budget traveler, or maybe you just don't care about the accommodations, then Flamingo can be pretty cheap during weekdays. So for example, you might be able to find it for $30 to $40 per night. What tends to kill the price that people don't realize is resort fees. 
Even though the room rate is 30 bucks per night, you may be paying 30 or 40 bucks in resort fees also per night. If you take a look at the chart, Diamond Status, without any gambling, falls in the mid-level. Even though I love going to Vegas, I'm generally there for food, entertainment, to hang out with people, and if I do gamble, it's generally poker. Of all the casino games, the casino doesn't make much from poker because they only collect a rake. You're playing against other players. Every other game out there, you're against a casino, and they have an edge. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if poker was the least profitable game that was on the table. Or I guess game on the floor. Okay, so if you don't gamble, why would you care about status? There are a ton of benefits, and one of the most tangible is a $100 celebration dinner. And again, this is from having status. You do not need to gamble in order to get this dinner. You are doing a status match, but it's legitimate status that's earned by having a credit card. In the past, Mandy and I used it as an excuse to go to Nobu, so we would each have a $100 certificate and apply it to the same meal. $200 in food every year doesn't really hurt. And yes, as of 2023, this does still seem to work for people that do the match. So for example, 236 Dakota did it in Reno three weeks ago, and it was fine. If you're watching this in 2024 or in the future, check Flyer Talk for data points. There are also a ton of other features, so one of the pretty good ones, if you are someone that lives in Vegas, is free valet and free self-parking. And I know that you get three hours of free parking if you are from Vegas, but sometimes that's not enough. This is better. You can also go into the priority lines for check-ins at restaurants and also a bunch of other places like clubs. I haven't used this, but there is access to the VIP reservation line and also access to the VIP Laurel Lounge. And to be fair, you do still need to pay to get into the lounge. You can only get in for free if you are gambling enough. Also know that some of them have been closed. For example, the Paris one in Vegas. One feature that people like that I still haven't used and I'd be careful with is a complimentary free stay in Atlantis. From my understanding, this still works. Just be careful. The reason I say that is because there is an expectation that you gamble. And if you don't, they're going to build your room. Taking a look at data points from April of 2022, and this might change in the future, the expectation is that you put four hours of play for your whole trip. One easy trick is to play some super low stake slots that are pretty affordable. You're still paying something, but it's not as much. If you are a poker player, I think there also are different rules, but double check that. Main takeaway is that free might not be free, so just be careful. The last feature is my favorite one, and I think the most valuable feature. It's the fact that you have no resort fees on any of your hotel stays. I talked about the Flamingo example, how you might find that for 20 or 30 bucks, but the resort fees are more than the retail price of that room. If you take a look online, retail price can be as low as 13 bucks. I've never seen that, but yeah. At the same time, they're charging you $45.30 in resort fees per night. This resort fee includes fitness center, pool, as well as phone calls. And even if you don't use any of those features, you still have to pay the fee. And that's kind of how they get you and what sucks. By having status, you dodge this fee, and you could argue that by having the card, even if you just do two nights, it pays for the card. Your mileage may vary, but the bane of most Vegas travelers is resort fees, so anything that gets you out of it is a big win. The last point I'll touch on super fast is Caesars versus MGM. I do think that Caesars has more economic options and leans more towards that side, while MGM has more mid-tier and expensive options. When I was younger, I was definitely a fan of Caesars because I was on more of a budget. Right now, I prefer MGMs. Still though, I think it's nice to have a backup option, especially for a place like Vegas, where the prices can be kind of random. For example, I've seen places like Luxor or Mandalay Bay, which are not the nicest, pretty mediocre properties, run close to $1,000, while hotels like Crockford's, Encore, as well as Cosmo were only $200. In that situation, the reason was because there was a conference on that side, and a lot of people going to the conference don't really want to traverse the whole of the strip in order to go to their conference every day. Also factor in that there are a lot of companies and people might be there for networking, so being around other people is generally beneficial. Even though Caesars might not be your first choice, it's nice to have additional options. Again, if you do want to learn about cards, we have links on asksabby.com slash business and also down below in the description box. If you made it to this point in the video, then leave a card emoji in the comments down below and I'll try to heart it and also respond. My first question for you is what are your thoughts on the card and is it something that you would consider getting? Number two, are you more of a Caesars or MGM person? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, share it with a friend, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.